In this video, we're going to look at special factoring, how to recognize a difference of squares, or how to factor a difference of squares. So how do we recognize a difference of squares? It basically tells you what it is. Difference implies subtraction. Squares, in this case, implies square roots. So a difference of squares looks like this. Perfect square minus perfect square. So there's our two squares. There's the subtraction. When we go to factor a difference of squares, so this is a rare case because usually when we factor, we're factoring trinomials. But here we're actually factoring a binomial. Um, and what it factors into is it factors into the root of the first minus the root of the second times the root of the first plus the root of the second. And if you check this, if you multiply these back out, what ends up happening when you FOIL or use the distributive property is the middle terms cancel because one middle term is AB, but the other one is negative AB, so those will cancel out. These also have a special relationship with each other. They're called their conjugates of each other, but that's for another video. So what's important to know is that when we, uh, when we see a binomial and we have two perfect squares and subtraction, that it will factor into A minus B root minus root times root plus root. It's also really important to note that there is no such thing as factoring a sum of squares, uh, at least not in the real number system. So if it's perfect square, Perfect square in addition, cool, it's not factorable. So just keep that in mind. It only works when it's subtraction. OK, so in our first example, 49x squared minus 64y squared, we want to factor this completely. So is 49x squared a perfect square? Yes, it is. Its root is 7x. 64y squared is a perfect square, and its root is 8y. <clears throat> I see the subtraction, so that means this is a difference of squares, so it will factor into root minus root times root plus root. And of course, if you put this factor first and have 7x plus 8y times 7x minus 8y, that's fine. The order of the factors doesn't matter. Um, so we would leave it like that. Just another note, it turns out that I'm really good at recognizing perfect squares because I deal with them a lot and I've dealt with them for a lot for a long time. If you're not as quick to find perfect squares, what you can do is you can just have a list of the perfect squares, and that way uh, it's just right there and it's not going to be too taxing on your brain. So if you just need to go off to the side and just say 1 squared equals 1, 2 squared equals 4, 3 squared equals 9, that might be helpful for a lot of these uh, different sections. Okay, let's look at letter B. Is 25 a perfect square? Yes, it is. Its root is 5. Uh-oh, fraction. Oh, no. It's okay. 1 is a perfect square in the numerator, its root is 1. 100 in the denominator is a perfect square, its root is 10. So the square root of 1 one hundredth is 1 tenth. So we would have 1 tenth, and then the square root of t squared is t. Not too bad. You can breathe a sigh of relief. It wasn't that bad. Uh, because they are both perfect squares and their subtraction, it's a difference of squares, it would be root minus root times root plus root. And that would be the factoring for letter B. For letter C, we have 81a to the fourth minus 16b to the fourth. 81a to the fourth, that's a perfect square. Its root is 9a squared, right? Because that's a to the fourth. This one's a little bit different than what we've seen. The square root of a to the fourth would be a squared, since a squared times a squared equals a to the fourth. Here we have 16b to the fourth. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of b to the fourth is b squared. So we do end up with two perfect squares and their subtraction. So we would have root minus root, whoops, close those parentheses, times root plus root squared. Okay, let's not leave anything off here. Let's just rewrite this so it's less gross. 9a squared. Okay, so I have it. So root minus root root plus root. Now I'm really struggling with this one. Why is this one so difficult for me? Well, because I know that there's another step here. I see here that this, remember when we factor completely, there should be no common factors in any of the factors. And this happens to be a difference of squares. 9a squared has a root of 3a. 4b squared has a root of 2b. So this one can continue to be factored. Notice here, these are both perfect squares, which is great but the addition throws it off, making it not factorable. So we can only factor the one with the subtraction, and it's going to factor into 3a minus 2b, root minus root, times root plus root, 
times the other piece from the original plus. So be careful. Anytime you see a degree higher than 2, be careful that there's not another difference of squares hiding inside the original difference of squares. Lastly, oh no, another fraction. But we already know how to handle this, so we're not worried at all. Let's see. 64, its perfect square is 8. 1, 16, so 1 is 1 and 16 is 4. And then r squared, the square root is r. Okay, we do see our difference of squares. We see our subtraction. So it's going to be root minus root times root plus root. And that would be our factoring of the difference of squares. Thank you.